There used to be a cafe at the, the bottom of Rockhurst Hill called the Chantier. It was a big old rambling sort of like hotel house. And it was owned by uh, this kind of hippie-ish creative mother type uh, lady who was very open to things. And she let the American draft dodgers open up a bar called Le Chantier. So we, uh, when that happened, we started to hang out there, of course, uh, go up there, bring the instruments, bring the, the jug of wine, and, you know, and started, started playing there. The guys decided, oh, well, we'll open the, the chantier for everybody. We'll make sandwiches and stuff like that, and we'll, we'll, invite, we'll invite musicians and everything. And that's where it all started uh, at that time. And it was more like hootenannies instead of just like, uh, or just having sing-alongs or get-togethers or something. It nice. wasn't organized. It wasn't in bands. It was in a nice building, like a kind of old, well, I don't know how old it was. Not really old. It was kind of cottagey and, and uh, you know, they'd feed you or whatever, give you a beer. So uh, Le Chantier was a nexus and a meeting place. And there was a lot, it was like, like Le Hibou or uh, the cafe scene, you know, the cafe 1890 or whatever. And uh, they, they had food and, and drink and uh, music. The shanty itself was, we had power, but we don't have, we had water coming in from the house opposite. And we would have a line, a water line running o over top the road into the house, you know. And the sewage was kind of not, not working. And uh, there was one toilet, a single toilet for, you know, for people, like when the, for example, when the Charlemagne band came, the band came, they brought a bunch of fans with them. We had to nail the doors shut. There were so many people in there, we couldn't, you know, there was on the porch, and the porch wasn't safe either, you know. <laughs> Channel Zero is the other one. Yeah, we would sit in the. There was a sort of a sunroom, a huge window, and it, the view is straight out up the river, and it, it was beautiful. And we would just sit there, and everybody gets stoned, and, and you just look on. What's what's the TV? Oh, that's Channel Zero. That's our big screen. <laughs> you know, when 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 hummingbirds mate, they they make this. They fly like in a U shape like that. And, and I think it's a mating dance. And they would do that in front of the window. And then we would go. <laughs> Everybody would be like, just, you know, be like that. It was pretty, it was, it was pretty strange. The word got around. And when there's a, there were some people playing in the city, groups that guys that were popular on the scene uh, in Montreal and everywhere, started after the show, they started to come down to Wakefield. To jam. Uh, to jam. And that, that started to go. Yep, 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 wow. One time we had the Robert Charlebois band. Not him, but the band. They came after they played at the, the Art Center in Ottawa. They came and played from, I forgot, 11 till 4 in the morning. And so the, there was those guys. And Heaven's Radio would come by and play. They had a really amazing piano player, Stevenson. Some, he was really good. Another fellow came by often, Mark Geronimo. I don't know if you ever heard of him. And he'd, he'd play one song, and one song only <laughs> that he knew all the time, but he would dish out cocaine, so <laughs> it was okay for everybody. <laughs> it was full every night, <laughs> full. And I tell you, the place, people were waiting outside, you know, like, you couldn't get in. But there was no way to, to make money or, you know, we would sell our stuff, then I would run up to the mini market, which is the IGA now, buy two more cases of beer, drive them back down, sell them again, it's that kind of a turnover. So it, it wasn't it wasn't a business. And then the whole show moved to Wayfield Inn, and it got full too. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody goes quite crazy. Before uh, it was very country. Yeah. 
it was the only music you had was uh, Hotel Preston, which was Western. And it was just country. Just so that's all there was there, country. But to answer a bit to your question, when all this was happening of us, of course, the more professional guy, like we mentioned, the, 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 the other guy, the, uh, Coburn, Bruce Coburn, when these people started to come around, well, it created a, a different, all kinds of different uh, scene, like just con not just country and western, but folk, you know, and uh, all, and and other people. Like they, there was a a, a potpourri of all kinds of music at that time, and by getting together and mixing it up, you know, with the Africans and all this, yeah. we could, we we could play. We could play whatever we wanted to, you know. So and we that's start a blues song with finish yeah. a reggae song. We were sharing all this, the music. It was like it, music was coming out, and this yeah. creation was just. And it was fun to play with other people yeah. too, because playing alone gets to be long. So that's when it started to change the uh, the, the country and western that was happening at the at the Chateau Dieppe at that time. The ocean bar, a woman walks on sad. Her hopes turn into empty dreams. Tries to understand You didn't listen To what a young boy feels The thing is, the Chanty wasn't uh, legal. They tried to organize the, the place with the toilets and everything, try to make it legal and on the long term they didn't want to give them a license so it closed down. That's no reason to throw the towel in. There's a whole lot of things we gotta talk about. When I back to When I come back to you. thing I remember like that first night that I was there my cheeks ached like crazy I thought well, what the hell is wrong and then then I realized it's because I'd been smiling all night and it was very comfortable it was just a very pleasant evening and the antithesis of anything commercial it was an experience and it was also Im yeah, it was amazing. It was probably one of the most amazing parts in my life. about how 